EE310, welcome to lab four. This is the lab on JFET junction field effect transistors, and we managed to, Steve managed to find some. And so we're going to do a two-part lab today. In the first part, we're going to measure its DC characteristic, giving you an input-output characteristic, and it's going to look like this. We went through this curve in lecture. You have a graph of IDS on this axis, VDS on this axis, and we're going to scale from zero to 10 volts. IDS, we're going to go from zero to about 10 milliamps. And we're going to collect a family of curves. Each curve is a different value of VGS. So this curve here is going to be VGS of zero. And then we're going to drop the VGS to, let's say, minus one. And take another curve, etc. And when we're done, we're going to get down here to about a VGS of around minus 7. And then once we get down here to the very bottom, the transistor is in pinch off and we're going to stop. So we'll take a family of curves. It's kind of boring. We're going to just take a, a series of points, ZVDS of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, and then 10. And then what we'll do is we'll just put all the dots up there and connect the dots and give me a curve. So we're going to take these curves point by point using the lab setup, and then you can go home and graph these, put these into your report as, the, um, as your IV characteristic of your transistor. So this is the kind of curve we're going to be taking in part one. It's kind of tedious, but it'll move pretty quickly once we get into the rhythm of it. Okay, and then that's it for part one. Okay, so welcome to part one of the experiment. We're going to be doing the DC characteristic the pinout for this transistor is given on the data sheet, but I drew a little diagram here. This is the top view. So looking down from the top with the tab, little tab sticking up and going around clockwise, you get case, which is always tied to source, gate, uh, sorry, gate, and then drain, and then source. So the two wires on either end of the tab, on either side of the tab, goes, both go to ground. So I'm going to orient the transistor on that way on the board with the tab pointing down, and then those two leads on the downward side so we can connect them to the ground bus. And then on the top side, we'll have drain and source, sorry, drain and gate. So we're just gonna get that plugged in there. Okay, and we're gonna jumper both of those leads to the ground lead. Okay, so I have some jumpers here from there to ground. And let's just borrow this one for the other side and we'll just do side to side. Okay, so now we've jumpered the source to the, to the case and now on top we're gonna have drain and gate. So to get this orientation, it's gonna be the gate over here and the drain over there. I wouldn't blame you if you actually wrote a little G and a D on here. So remember which is which. So we're gonna connect the gate to the negative voltage over here. Like so, that's coming in on the negative binding post. And we're going to connect the drain to the positive voltage that comes in over here. And then, oh, we need to install our resistor. Let's not forget that. So we're going to then interrupt the drain supply with a 10K resistor. We're just putting that in there to limit the current, like so. And then the only other thing we need to add on to the circuit are our meters. So we're going to be using two meters, one for um, IDS, one for VDS. We're going to be measuring our gate voltage over here on the signal generator. And then the VDS is going to be one meter and the IDS is going to be the other. Now to do the IDS, we're going to have to interrupt the circuit from somehow going through the path. And it makes more sense to me to put the IDS right here on the signal, on the signal source. I don't know if this is sense enough to pick up a couple of milliamps. I'm not sure. It might be. All right, so we can try that. So we're going to use this to measure VDD and IDS, and then VDS will be a voltmeter, 
And then the other voltage is going to come off of this side, which we already have on a meter as well. So we only need to use one meter for now. We're going to use this to measure the VDS of the transistor. So we carefully unwrap our probes. And the negative voltage is going to be connected to ground. So for that, we can just use a jumper. We can just use a banana plug and connect the, the ground here to the ground there on our board. That's nice. It keeps it away from the circuitry. And then the positive one, we're going to need a probe for that. So we have these handy alligator clips and we're going to connect that onto the board. And instead of having it on the board where it's going to tug on the devices, I'm going to put it over here with the jumper and connect it to the wire. Oops, that one's a little bit injured. Let's try another one. So that's connected to the drain of the transistor to here. And this we're going to set for DC volts to measure our, oops, is that coming? Is that alive? I think we might have a dead battery here. Let's try the other one. So this one needs a battery. Let's try this one. Luckily, we don't make you pay for batteries. We pay for them. That's better. Okay. And then the final thing we need to do is we need to connect our power supply. We're getting a positive voltage from the left side and a negative voltage on the right side. So positive voltage here means, means we strap negative to ground. Okay. And then this line here will be our positive voltage that goes to the drain. I can move this out of the way and plug this into the voltmeter. Okay, on the positive volts side, so that's going to be this plug right there is the volts, ohms, and amps, and amps of the volts and ohms input. And then we can move this other wire out the way. Okay, and now we're going to need our positive voltage coming off of here, going to the plus. Another handy jumper. Plus. To plus. And then we're going to, then we will need a negative side over here. So to do that, we're going to strap the plus to ground, and then this will be the negative supply. So let's take a, a jumper here. Both of these are broken. Um, okay. And we're going to strap the plus to ground, making that a negative output. So let's grab a black wire. Make sure that both of these voltages are turned down to zero before you apply them to your circuit. So this is the negative going to the minus input. So this is going to be the gate voltage over here. This is going to be the VDD over there. And if you have little post-it notes, you can actually make a note of that. VDD here, VGG there. Okay, and then we do have one more jumper here. Let's see if we can get that in there. Okay. All right. So now we have plus tied to ground, making that a negative output, which goes to the negative here. And we have minus tied to ground, making this the positive output, which goes to there, which goes through RD to the drain of the transistor. And both of our voltages are turned all the way down. And I think we are good to get started. Um, I have a feeling that I forgot something, but I don't think I did. Okay, so it wouldn't hurt before we get too deep into this to, just to start to crank these voltages up and see if we get anything. So we're going to set this on the positive over here. And right now the transistor with zero volts on the gate should be fully on. It should be fully conductive. Let's just turn up V1 and see if we get a current flow. It doesn't, oh, we need a ground lead. That's what I was, had this nagging feeling I was forgetting. Let us connect the ground from the center 
to the ground over here and see if that makes a difference. So we're going to gradually turn this voltage up and see if we get a current flow. And I don't think we are. So let's find out why that is. We're going to temporarily assign our DC meter here as a probe. Let's just see what's going on. So on the source and case, they're both at ground, that's good. The gate is at zero also. Let's see if that responds. So that's channel, that's V2. Yep, and the gate voltage is working. So we are getting a voltage from here to the gate. So let's see if, why we're not getting a voltage to the drain. So let's go back and look at our supply. Let's see if the, the positive supply is arriving there. And it is, we got 3.12 and 3.12. So the voltage is getting there, um, but the voltage here is nothing, which means the transistor is not turning on. So let's first make sure that it's plugged in all the way. I'm just going to reform these pins so that they line up a little bit better with the holes. And try this again. Turn the voltage down. Whenever you adjust your circuit, it's, it's a good policy to just turn your voltage down. Okay, so the bottom two are connected and the top two are connected. We're still not getting any current. So the next thing to suspect is a bad, maybe a bad transistor. Let's try just swapping in another one. Sometimes these transistors do get blown up, but students aren't really sure that they're bad, so they put them back in the box and let somebody else figure it out. And so let's try a different transistor, turn the voltage down again, and see if that draws any current. And this is pretty typical of things you should expect to run into in lab, have finding bad components. Still no current. Okay. All the voltages are there. We're getting no voltage on the drain to so the transistor. Oh, I'm sorry, the transistor is on. It's a dead short. Okay. If we have zero volts on the drain, it means the transistor is turned on and it's a dead short. So now what we should be able to do is let's just put a couple of volts here, let's say four or five volts on the drain. And now let's see if we can get the transistor to shut off by turning on the gate, making the gate more negative. And the voltage of the VDS is changing. So I think it's working. It's just a matter that the um, ammeter is not sensitive enough. So maybe we can get a, a more sensitive ammeter. Okay. And then we'll try with a more sensitive ammeter. So the question is, when you're measuring zero volts on the drain, it means the transistor is a short. It's, conduct, it's conducting like a dead short. And it means that there is a current there, but this is not sensitive enough to pick it up. So we're going to get ourselves a proper ammeter with lots of digits, and we'll be able to take lots more measurements. With a 10K resistor here, we should only expect to see at most, um, at most uh, uh, one or two milliamps. And this is not really going to pick it up very well. Okay, we have replaced our ammeter with instead of what's internal to the power supply, we got a proper ammeter with lots of digits. And this is right now reading nine microamps, which is way more detailed than we'll ever need. Uh, these are the Keithleys. This is the Keithley model 2000, serial number 371. We're using a um, Keysight E3620A dual power supply, number 744. We are using a Fluke 189 uh, True RMS Multimeter, number 463. And the breadboard is number five. That's not quite as critical. So that's the equipment we're using. We've built the circuit. We've got IDS here, VDS there. So what we're going to do is we're going to dial up a VGG 
on V2. And then we're going to sweep V1 from zero. A quick question. Sure. Are you measuring VDS? Oh, we're not. Yeah, let's, let's fix that. Good catch. Yeah. Okay. So we've got VDS coming in over here. We're going to sweep VGG on this meter using V2. And then we're going to set VGG. And then we're going to sweep VGG on V1 from 0 to 10 volts. Take 6 or 7 points in there. And we'll try to keep it uniform so the graph will have as many points on it as possible. So we're going to start with a VGG of 0. Okay, that's pin 2. And then we're going to change the VDD to get different voltages here. So we're starting at 0, 0. We get 9 microamps, which is for us is nothing. Okay. And then we're going to bring this up to 1 volt. And remember, this is the transistor is wide open. So this is passing a lot of current. So there's 1 volt VDS, 3.3 milliamps. All these numbers should come down as we go to higher levels of VGG. So there's 2 volts. as 5.62 milliamps. Three volts is 7.07 .07 milliamps. Four volts is 7.8 milliamps. Five volts is 8.18 .8 milliamps. Six volts is 8.36 milliamps. Seven volts is 8.41 milliamps. 8 volts is 8.45 milliamps. 9 volts is 8.45 milliamps again. 10 volts is 8.45 milliamps of 8.41 milliamps again. So we have definitely reached the plateau. So let's bring our VDD back to zero. And let us now set our gate to 1 volt. Okay, we have one volt on the gate. VG is now negative one. And let's ramp V1 up again. So at zero, we have zero. At at one volt, we have 2.53 milliamps. And that is less than we saw before. At two volts, we have 4.22 milliamps. At 3 volts, we have 5.22 milliamps again. At 4 volts, we have 5.76 milliamps. At 5 volts, we have 6.01 milliamps. At 6 volts, we have 6.18 milliamps. At 7 volts, we have 6.27 milliamps. At 8 volts, we have 6.33 milliamps. And again, we're seeing plateauing in here. At 9 volts, we have 6.35 milliamps. And at 10 volts, we have 6.37 milliamps. So that's our minus 1 curve. Let's reset our VDD to 0. And go to our minus 2 curve. Okay, and again, we have zero volts, zero current, okay? We have one volt, 1.91 milliamps. At two volts, we have 3.06 milliamps. 
At three volts, we have 3.62 milliamps. Four volts, we have 3.91 milliamps. Five volts, we have 4.10 milliamps. Six volts, we have 4.21 milliamps. Seven volts, we have 4.29 milliamps. Eight volts, 4.35 milliamps. Nine volts, we have 4.40 million, 4.39 milliamps. And at 10 volts, we have 4.42 milliamps. So that is the next curve. Let's reset and dial up a VGS of three, negative. Okay, so again, we have zero and zero, good sign, okay. And at one volt, we have 1.25 milliamps. At two volts, we have 1.83 milliamps. At three volts, we have 2.09 milliamps. At four volts, we have 2.24 milliamps. At five volts, we have 2.36 milliamps. At six volts, we have 2.44 milliamps. Seven volts, we have 2.51 milliamps. Eight volts, we got 2.56 milliamps. Nine volts, we have 2.61 milliamps. And at 10 volts, we got 2.64 milliamps. Okay. And the transistor is definitely showing signs of shutting down. So now let's go to 4 volts. Okay. This is our VGS is equal to minus 4 curve. And again, we've got 0 volts, 0 amps. Good sign. We've got 1 volt, 0.5 milliamps. It's really shutting down now. 2 volts, we got 0.68 milliamps. At 3 volts, we got 0.79 or 0.80 milliamps. 4 volts, we got 0.88 milliamps. At 5 volts, we got 0.95 milliamps. At 6 volts, we got one milliamp even. At seven volts, we got 1.05 milliamps. At eight volts, 1.09 milliamps. Nine milliamps, nine volts, we got 1.12 milliamps. And at 10 volts, we got 1.16 milliamps. Okay, so let's go to our next curve. This may be the last one. Let's go to five. Okay, and again, we got zero and zero. That's good. So this is the VGS of minus five curve. At one volt, we got nothing, five microamps. Let's just jack this up a little higher and see if it takes us anywhere. At two volts, we've got 16 microamps. At three volts, <clears throat> we got 31 microamps. At four volts, we have 44 microamps. And we can pretty much stop here. Let's just jump to 10. We can pretty much stop here because this won't even show up on your graph. 
So even at 10 volts, we've only got 130, so 0 0.13 milliamps or 130 microamps. So the transistor for all intents and purposes in pinch off. So what we can say is that the pinch off voltage of our transistor is somewhere between minus four and minus five volts. Somewhere in there is when, it, when it's actually shut down. Okay, that's it for part one.